Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to Angie in Action. And we're so happy to have us today, Ryan Miner, and he's a senior tax manager with Freeland Colwell Riley. Hi, Ryan. Hi, good to be here. Yeah, Hi, Ryan. Hi, uh, <laughs> other co hosts, Nikki Sage, Joy Werda, and Lizette Werda. Hi, ladies. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, everybody's managing somewhat with all that's going on with our this COVID-19. I think it's a day-to-day -day interaction with change. I think we're all like linked to our media, just trying to figure out, follow it as it goes. And I'm sure Ryan's going to be able to explain, like it changes every day. Yeah. Exactly. It's so, changing it as we speak right now. So. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Because Ford's address is going <laughs> yes. on. So Ryan, just what we heard from uh, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau this morning, they changed some things for uh, small businesses, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, uh, just a few hours ago, we announced a 75% wage subsidy. Yeah, but yeah. like any other kind of announcements, you, you really the details come out later. Yeah. Uh, there's many yeah. blanks to be filled in. For example, is there a limit on it? Uh, does it apply to, uh, you know, non-arms length persons like family members? Right. Uh, you know, how is it calculated? Uh, these sort of things yeah. uh, get filled in. There'll be a bill presented in Parliament uh, rather hurriedly again, I imagine. Uh, and then details to follow. Yeah. Uh, as is typical uh, with this uh, yeah. emerging situation. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm self employed, and like I say, I'll be calling on you to tell me what I'm entitled to because I can't keep up. I can't understand all of it. And, it, and, and uh, you know, I mean, they haven't got everything in place yet. People are the unemployment benefit package they got well what do they call it? it's actually emergency response benefit does that kind of well the uh, the employment insurance program still exists it still is there for loss of employment it, it is still there for uh, sickness benefits right okay. uh, however they're, they're they tweak the sickness benefit aspect where if you're on a imposed quarantine uh, you don't need a doctor's note and they waive the one week uh, waiting period well, uh, but I think, I think you know that's fair you know Yes, but they also introduced a, a second benefit program uh, for uh, because it seems to me that they can't handle the, the volume of applications for the EI program. Uh, partly, plus not everybody qualifies. Uh, to qualify under EI, you need to have worked a certain number of hours, uh, depending on the part of the country you live in. Uh, and self-employed persons, generally speaking, aren't eligible for EI. Uh, so the, the government introduced and passed uh, by Bill C-13, which I believe was passed on Receive Royal Assent Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. It was introduced Tuesday. So that's how quick things happen here. Uh, they introduced a program called the Canada Emergency Response Benefit, which uh, is, uh, is a quasi-employment insurance program, uh, but a bit broader. And it'll offer a taxable uh, payment of 2000 per month maximum. Uh, but there's some criteria. And I can talk briefly about how, how it works if you want. Uh, the application form isn't out yet. It's uh, The government says it's going to be online uh, in April at some point. Uh, it's not available yet. Uh, but, but in a nutshell, um, there's a period of time, uh, March 15, 2020 to April 3rd, uh, 2020. Uh, if you can identify a four-week period uh, where you had to take um, – 14 consecutive, within which rather you had to take 14 consecutive days off uh, due to COVID-19. And, and that doesn't necessarily mean actually having it or a family member having it. it you could qualify if you, if you can't work because, for example, schools and daycares are closed. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll get you there as well. Uh, if you can identify, a, a, you know, a 14 consecutive day period where you're not earning any employment income, self-employment income, uh, and you can not already be on EI. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you can identify that, then, then you can apply for this program. And my understanding is every two weeks, you're going to have to certify that you continue to meet uh, the criteria uh, for the benefits to continue. Uh, basically, uh, the benefits uh, are capped at uh, 16 weeks, so about around four uh, months. Um, and, and there's a small catch. You need to have earned $5,000 of employment income or self-employment income. Or, or EI benefits or, or certain provincial benefits uh, basically within the past 12 months. So not an overly difficult criteria to meet, uh, but it's there. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, $2,000 per four-week period, and it is taxable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So maybe I qualify on that one. <laughs> I finally was released. You never know. From 14 consecutive days. Well, that's just it. It's for people that are in the, the travel quarantine. Uh, yeah, that was me. Uh, as well, but it also people who would otherwise get EI could could get into this as well. It seems to me that uh, uh, they're they're backlogged quite a bit at uh, the EI program. Uh, service center. Yeah. I'm self-employed, so I, I mean I don't. Oh, uh, you you probably wouldn't qualify anyway under the EI program. Yeah, no, for but sure. This is available. So well, with we'll... sorry, Ryan, with the today's announcement, they also made a notation with the um, the small business and entrepreneurship piece, which might be more suited for some that they're actually backdating to march 15th it's my understanding they're actually going back to march 15th as that's the loan the date of what program, they're right at. that's the the loan program yes i uh, and it's up to forty thousand, i believe it was yeah so forty thousand um get with a guarantee piece uh yeah. one year interest free but if you meet that criteria and you qualify there could be ten thousand of that forgivable Right. Uh, and again, we have to we have to see the details as to who qualifies. Uh, there are also uh, are other programs. Uh, the Business Development Bank of Canada uh, has programs. Uh, Export Development Canada has programs for uh, export oriented uh, businesses, uh, you know, pretty new programs. Uh, so, you know, there's that as well. Um, uh, it is quite a comprehensive, I mean, the, the, the amount of subsidies and, and, you know, changes to programs is incredible. Uh, For the general taxpayer, so we'll just, a normal, not a business owner, somebody who's just maybe an aging demographic, they're listening today or watching the video, and they're just wondering, how is this going to impact their taxable income later, right? So any credit oh, they get that will be taxed on? If they're eligible, obviously. Uh, well, the uh, the emergency response benefit is going to be taxable, right? Uh, as well as EI is taxable, but but for for uh, you know retired folks, for example, uh, there is uh, Ontario came up with um, uh, you know a relatively small supplement to the uh, the old age security program. Uh, I can't remember the not the acronym, but Ontario does supplement OAS, mm -hmm. and they're going to supplement it for up to six months. Um, uh, mm -hmm. under the Ontario program and the maximum it seems to me you'll get is $83 a month. Uh, so you're going to get an additional um, old age security benefit. And and the other thing as far as seniors is the, uh, you know, RIFs, Registered Retirement Income Funds. Uh, the market isn't exactly doing too well. If you follow the TSX, it's down. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it could be 40%. I haven't looked lately. Don't, uh, don't, it's very scary. Yeah, it went from 17,000 down to 12,000 or so. Uh, so it's pretty low. And generally speaking, the market is low. Uh, under, with a registered retirement income fund, you're supposed to withdraw a minimum amount uh, each year. So what they did was they reduced that minimum amount um, by 25%. Mm. He made a note this morning in his address that there, I'm not sure when the announcement would be coming in the days following that they were also going to be looking at tax breaks and credits for our homeless, our vulnerable communities, our, you know, the, the seniors, the aging demographic, the, ind the individuals that their income base may be lower than the 30,000, give or take. So do you, do you have any idea how you think that might play out? Like, I, I look at all the tax breaks and all the credits that are been giving, and I'm thinking, it, it doesn't surprise where me. Where is it going to end? I'm not, I'm not familiar with that, uh, with any of those new programs that were announced. Uh, you know, again, the details when they come out. I'm current as to about yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> so, which is ancient, it seems. Yeah. Uh, you know, what else came out? Well, uh, uh, for lower income individuals, uh, they're going to bump up your, your GST credit, your GST, okay. HST credit. That's good. Uh, it seems to me the amount is approximately $400 for single individuals, $600 for couples. Okay. Uh, for parents, the provincial government announced uh, a one-time payment at $200 per child for children that are uh, up to 12 years of age. Okay. Uh, uh, recognizing that schools are closed, daycares are closed, it's kind of a shot in the arm to, you know, to recognize that you have these added difficulties. And uh, $250 if the if this child is uh, special needs. Uh, but the federal government also announced a uh, increase to the Canada Child Benefit. Yeah, uh, I believe it's a one-time payment uh, increase of three hundred dollars per child. 
I, I thought it was check. ongoing. Oh, so it, it might be. Federal? I, I don't recall offhand. Uh, so that's a federal and a provincial then. They're two yes. separate. I was I was wondering that when I read that this morning, actually, if the 200 was supplementing the 300 or if I was misreading no, that. No, different governments oh, okay. uh, implementing them. Okay. Uh, I have to, I'm not, I know the GST was supposed to be, uh, I believe it was a one-time payment around the month of May, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, I'd have to check that. But certainly, if you're already receiving uh, GST, HST payments, uh, the plan is to augment, increase those payments. Um and the Canada Child Benefit. Uh, what else was announced? Um, you know, students uh, that have student loans, there's a federal and a provincial uh, student loan program. Uh, they announced a deferral, I believe it was uh, six months, a deferral of interest and principal payments. Uh, not a forgiveness, but a deferral. Well, if they're deferring, uh, so they're not, okay, so they're deferring the payment mm -hmm. and interest calculation. I thought they weren't going to be compounding the interest on those. My understanding is they deferred the payment. I don't know about the compounding aspect of it. Okay. Uh, again, that's Ontario and federal, and, and that came out just this week, actually. Uh, what it, what came out for business? Uh, there's quite a bit, of, quite a few business measures. Uh, one that was passed is the, the wage subsidy program. Uh, businesses can uh, basically reduce their payroll remittance to the Canada yeah. Revenue Agency by the amount of a, a calculated subsidy. Now, uh, the Prime Minister announced a 75% subsidy today, uh, but I don't know how the calculation is going to work. That is uh, the, the I know, I just happened. figured out the 10% calculation. So I guess. Yeah, the 10% uh, calculation was capped at uh, 1375 per employee, uh, but and maximum 25000 for the, the, the employer overall. Yeah. And it was basically calculated at 10% of your wages. And a definition of who could qualify was quite broad. You could be the owner of a company drawing a wage, family members. You could be part-time, um, you know, full-time. It was really quite broad. Uh, so, it, you know, when the details come out of the 75%, uh, you know, I'll be able to share that. Uh, so at the moment, uh, it's, the, the law is, currently stands. There's a 10% um, wage subsidy. Uh, but in some manner, it will increase to 75%. Uh, at least for a segment of small businesses. Uh, I'm not clear on, on the, the details because they haven't been published. And some what of the de deadlines, Ryan, have been changed, right? For, for uh, uh, yeah. well, to the average individual, but also businesses, the deadlines and, and uh, like regarding HST and, well, yeah. and all that sort of thing. As far as the, as far as individuals, uh, you know, the usual filing deadline for a personal income tax return is uh, April 30. Uh, you know, that falls on a weekend, you get the, the following, uh, following workday. They extended a deadline to June 1st. Uh, that is for people that aren't self-employed. Self-employed persons have, uh, generally speaking, get an extra bit of time, uh, June 15. And to my knowledge, that hasn't been extended. Uh, and uh, trust returns, uh, trust is um, a type of tax return, uh, in, you know, in the state, when someone passes away, you might have a, a trust return. Uh, that got extended to uh, the deadline for filing. That got extended to uh, May 1st. Uh, as far as business uh, filing deadlines, I'm not aware that the deadlines themselves have been extended. However, the government has offered some sort of leniency in terms of paying your balances. Uh, my understanding is that last time I checked, they were going to give you for income taxes uh, until September 1st uh, to pay without interest. I'm not aware of any extensions in the actual filing deadline. Oh, okay. okay. The other thing the gov Ontario government did, uh, they passed a law, Bill 188, uh, a couple days ago, and it offers basically an incentive uh, for investing primarily in uh, non-residential real estate, which is, uh, you know, given the economy, people are afraid to invest in, in, you know, in such projects. Uh, so the, uh, the Ford government came out with a uh, basically a 10% uh, subsidy for investing in uh, primarily non-residential real estate in certain markets, uh, of which the city of Greater Sudbury is one of those markets. Okay. Good. Just as, a, as an in investment tax credit to, to try to get some kind of economic activity happening. Okay, good to know. Uh, on the other hand, though, he also put out a list of, uh, you know, essential services. And if you're not on the list, you're, you're supposed to shut down as well. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, our, uh, as a realtor, our, we're considered an essential service. 
mostly that was to allow all the closings that are still haven't closed to allow those yeah. to continue in the registry to be able to register them. Um, yeah. We are, of course, now uh, they're highly recommending that you don't meet anybody personally, right? So no open houses. Yeah, you're left with looking at virtual tours, which not everybody wants to buy a property with a virtual tour. No. You know, so it's a it's a little tricky situation, and they keep it's kind of fluid too. Uh, they keep uh, the the wording gets stronger and stronger every day. That you know, basically, don't go out there. You know, I usually put off getting a haircut. Uh, now I'm regretting it because there nobody's open anymore. Well, that, I understand that one. Ryan, so they also made an announcement today, if I'm right, with the Bank of Canada? Oh, okay. The, the Bank of Canada lowered the, uh, the central bank interest rate uh, 50 basis points, a half percent. Uh, so usually what happens is that that trickles down into, uh, you know, the, the prime lending rates of the big banks and credit unions. Okay. Uh, so if you have a variable rate mortgage, then you should get some interest relief. If you have a fixed rate mortgage, then you're going to still be paying, generally speaking, the, uh, the fixed interest rate. However, uh, the big banks particularly did come out and, and offer a deferral program, which I believe they, they may, depending on the circumstances, and, and you, you have to phone them which increasingly is difficult to do. Uh, they may extend, uh, my understanding is your, your payments uh, six months, up to six months. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's longer I, at this point, but. I actually had a chance to speak to a bank uh, manager, a representative uh, just off chance on another conversation for another issue. And they were explaining to me that, yes, they were deferring uh, for some households, you know, your mortgage for three months, uh, what six months, whatever it might be, but the interest would be incurred and then that interest would have to be paid at the end of that date. Yeah, there's no forgiveness um, element yeah. to it. It's but just it does help, I guess, with credit rating to do it as yeah, a versus missing uh, payment, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people are being laid off and their income is markedly reduced and they're on EI and, and this new Canada emergency response benefit. Uh, you know, increasingly people can't pay their mortgage. Right. Uh, so, and the hope is that this turns around. The other, the scary thing is we have no idea when this is going to turn around. No, like, uh, you know, I barely been outside in the last six days. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a hermit these days. I, I like to go back to normal. And I, yeah, I just don't know when that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I heard uh, today, and I don't know, it could be rumor um, uh, that uh, the bank also lowering the interest rate on all their credit cards. Oh, yeah, I heard that, too. I heard that, too. I have I heard rumblings anything. about that. I don't know yep. uh, where that landed. Has anybody heard anything from MasterCard or? No. No. no, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, a typical yeah. credit card has an 18% interest rate yeah. uh, in this market of, uh, you know, uh, reduced um, economic activity, layoffs, uh, you know, there'll, there'll be, you know, people will be, um, you know, on the cusp of bankruptcy if there's no relief in that area. Yeah, I do. Oh. Um, they're the car dealership. So some of the banks that if you have a, a lease payment or a loan payment for vehicles have reached out to say, you know, do you want to defer your payment for three months, um, X amount of days or anything of that without any. I didn't get uh, that call. Yeah. yeah apparently if you call, uh, I know somebody who just did it. So, and they I had a shall. Yeah. yeah. So well, yeah, I, they, I they guess they're trying. It was, it was interesting because, yeah, I did have one of the banks reach out to me and that basically asked, you know, what can we do to help? But do you need Yeah, support? same with the Scotia. I know it's been doing that too. So I wow. said, at this point, I don't, but I might be calling you in a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> check back as the news progresses in the weeks to come on these day-to-day -day announcements. Check back with us in 30 well, days. <laughs> and, and, and reality is for a lot of people, you know, some things are going to help them get through it. And uh, I hope that's true because it's, it, this is like unheard of, right? We, we've never experienced anything to this degree ever. Yeah. Yeah. I know our cellular phones and, and our internet provider, uh, we were contacted saying that there was no, not going to be any overage. Yeah, no overuse. Uh, so and the, uh, the hydro great. rates are, yeah. are not going to be adjusted for time of use. I believe you're going to get the lowest rate on your hydro bills. Yeah. yeah and they said that that would save people 50%. Because that's, that's a 50% rule. It, it possibly. Uh, however, for non -peak. You know, those bills are going to come due at some point. Hopefully, you yeah. know, hopefully this ends soon. Because yeah. the longer this goes on, you know, the, the country's national debt and our municipal debt is uh, going to skyrocket. 
Well, That's the scary part. Uh, uh, all they said in municipally, I think, hey, there's been some leeway. I guess now they've closed the garbage dump, so we were allowed four bags of garbage. I, th I don't think they're going to charge uh, late fees for your income tax, uh, for your property tax, that sort of thing. But they're not saying you can't pay your, your property tax, but they no. they'd be charging for a lot of the things uh, that we normally would have got. But, well, and all this uh, less traffic that's going on, I'm, I've actually noticed there's there's not as many potholes as flushed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds really like great. Positive note to all. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, that's true. Less traffic, yeah. yeah. That's just a deferral, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 It'll be here in July. Yeah, I guess. Right. There's also nobody working to fill them in, too, probably. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 You know, and and it's, uh, we have to really give credit to all of the the workers out there. Our healthcare professionals, our people working in the grocery stores, all the people sometimes that get no uh, credit or recognition, the truck drivers, I mean, they're having a heck of a time right now, even finding a place that they can pull over and stop and get something to eat. It's uh, And shower, a lot of them stop yeah. Yeah. shower. Yeah, there's a lot of things and I, like, I, thank God all these people are working, the, the healthcare profession, is that you must, like, I mean, you just must be. You know, I, I, one thing, and I mean, I've always known that I've had great employees, but I now have changed that, uh, uh, and, and I have amazing. Yeah. The best employees. Right? You, don't, <laughs> yeah. you don't understand how it's so beautiful to see. Like, I have workers, we do home care, they go from home to home, making sure, you know, people are safe and sound in their house, and... Um, you know, like no sick calls coming in, no any people just, and people are, uh, you know, our caregivers are calling in to say, has anybody else called in sick? I can take on her client load. Uh, easy. Yeah. Calling in for more hours was really like a, because yeah, it would be so easy. Right? I can work more. Yeah. yeah. It would be so well, easy for them to say, I'm not coming to work. Right. I don't want to yeah. be exposed, but thank God they're going to work all these people. Yeah. We, have, oh, they we need the essentials. We need them. And I know there was a comment on Facebook yesterday about, well, there's still traffic. And I mean, I don't usually post on comments, but I said, you know, there are essential workers out there. There are those out there that need to be going to work because we need them to be there. Yeah. Or they could be just going to the LCBO because that's essential too, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you think of Never that, understand that, that. I'd say yes. I think they're yeah. under reduced work hours, but <sighs> yeah. still open but nonetheless. What is work sharing? before I know our time will be limited, but what does the term work sharing mean when the, they're passing this conversations and they're saying, you know, work sharing is subsidized part? Work sharing, I believe there's an EI program called for work sharing. Uh, like I, I think the idea was that um, you could continue to work your job on a reduced number of hours and still get EI. Uh, I'm not, I don't profess to be an expert in the EI program. My understanding was that there is an EI uh, work sharing uh, program, Yeah, I heard uh, that but I don't know too. the particulars of it. Yeah, I think it's a, it, it, it's a longer process. You actually have to apply and there's like a 30 day uh, and it's an application you do with your employees and the employer. Because they mentioned it today in the address. It's a team uh, effort thing. Yeah, right? that they were going to try and, I guess, move a little bit of the work sharing and with hopes that they would be able to bring back some employees that maybe were laid off. But now with this 75%, that might just... That might be part of that subsidy piece too. I don't know. Or remove that need to people. Yeah, out. maybe. Losing hours, losing income, right? Yeah, maybe. I mean, either they get a subsidy, either the, the employer gets a sub subsidy and keeps the employee on, or they go off and the, and, and the, mm -hmm. the uh, you know the the benefits through the governments. Either way, um, the mo the money's getting funneled to them, yeah. right? Because I think what was the total last week? Three million Canadians had applied for EI employment. Wow. I didn't know that statistic. Last what? I heard, it was one million, but that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. And uh, they're not equipped to keep up with that kind of workload. No. One of the one of the reasons why they, they have the Canada Revenue Agency administer this other uh, benefit program um, in early April. And just a quick point, I, I uh, there's kind of they, they announced that there's sort of three ways to apply for the Canada Emergency Response Benefit: CRA My Account, My Service Canada Account, 
or a toll-free number. There's going to be a toll-free number uh, where you're actually inputting the application information via your telephone. That's my understanding. Well, I think it's important for the senior population that they don't have access to internet or computer. That there's a yeah. phone number. Mm -hmm. they, they say April, early April. Um, you know, that's all they put out so far as far as timing. Uh, they changed the name today, right? Also from social distancing to physical distancing? Oh. <laughs> I heard that, yeah. So that's the new term out there. Social distancing is now physical distancing. You can still be social, just be physically distant. Uh, there, there are some, you know, civil liberty aspects of it where they're, they're talking about arresting you and fining you for being, you know, not exercising social distancing. You know, scary kind of emergency kind of powers that are, uh, you know, increasingly being used around the world. So they're just talking about it. They actually haven't implemented anything, right? No. Well, I think they did in the province. Well, for the border, they did. Yeah. What did they do for the border? Well, the, they're as effective yesterday, midnight, the night before, right? That's different if you're coming in and you're traveling abroad and you're coming back home. You have, you're a mandatory. Mandatory 14-day quarantine. The Prime Minister issued an order in council to that effect. So what's the uh, punishment if you break your quarantine, though? Do it's they a actually huge physical? fine. Huge and fine. And they yeah. are implementing And prison. Punishment. Yeah, I heard so, that. Like, yeah. Well, you hear people uh, talking, but is it happening? Yeah. Is it not happening? Yeah. You know what I mean? Is it's it just a threat? How, how or is it force it will be a different issue, I think. Yeah, yeah I'm not right? aware of any actual enforcement action. Yeah. Uh, well, I think people will report each other. I mean, uh, right now they probably will because <laughs> right now they will. Well, people are no. fed up. With people people are pissed. Yeah, they are. They and, are. Uh, you know, there's a few of my friends still on Facebook posting whatever, and I'm thinking like I'm not impressed. You know, like uh, this is serious stuff, and we need to all pull yeah. together, or it's going to take longer and longer. Yeah, we need to shorten it up by behaving and staying home and. Yeah, I just fear it might reach a point where people are just fed up and they say, I've had enough. I'm going back to my normal life. Well, that's what I'm worried. That could about. happen. Yeah, and it could. You know, and there are some people, uh, some leaders in the world that are making it sound like. <laughs> oh, like, here we go. Go ahead. Go. I wonder what she's talking about. <laughs> well, um, you know, like there, and so people will think it's not that serious. You know, yes. gonna, yeah. it's okay to go out in a couple of weeks. Well, it may not be. We, I think we're just hitting the peak in a lot of places. So we have to behave and be good citizens and let's get through this. And uh, it'll yeah. be Is this the kind of thing that will they can go away without a vaccine? Or do you absolutely need a vaccine for this to go away? I, yeah, who knows? Like we, we, every day is a new learning experience. Because nobody's been through anything like this. In, in At least not in recent memory. I mean, no. historically, there have been pandemics, but... You know, and, and the social media is great, but at the same time, I... It feeds. It can make things... It scares people. You know, yeah. like, it, uh, like I say, like years ago, when people went to war, they relied on letters. They weren't getting Facebook messages, <laughs> So, but so it's everything so instantaneous right now. We, you know, we share information and some of it's garbage and it's yeah. information yeah. and these conspiracy theories out there. It is quite a bit like a war, yeah, you know, sure. to some extent, because factories are being told to produce, yeah. you know, masks, hand sanitizer, just like in the old war days and, uh, uh, you know, uh, civil liberty kind of things, uh, getting fined for, you know, going out in public even well, uh, in some sure. parts of the world. There's good corporate citizens out there. There's some people taking, some people are winning and some people are losing big time, right? But hopefully, you know, we've got enough corporate uh, good citizens to get us through that. I think we're going to see a, a huge retirement coming from many people. They're just going to get fed up. Too much politics involved. I'm just going to take my retirement and my pension and I'm going to go <clears> to that camp for the next 20 years. The only problem is the pension plan is markedly reduced at this point. It has to turn around. Yeah. Sure. We need the you know, things to improve, people to get back to work, and uh, reality. But every day is changing, and yeah, I mean, Ryan, in a week from now, who knows what will be involved with all of the, the tax situations and all of the programs. I mean, they changed just from days ago. <laughs> things have changed. Yeah. They they might extend you know, the deadline again. We, yeah. You know, yeah. we don't know. It's again, everything is fluid. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, we're, we're being asked me. to. Yeah, we're being asked to stay at home, 
yep. two weeks in the comfort of our home with all our social media, with internet, with our family. Yeah. People just need to do that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And this will, you know, I, it's not that hard. No, it's not that but hard. It's not, but there's still a lot of stupidity in the world. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. It is true. Well, there's a lot of entitlement. You think, okay, that's my life. I'm just going to do what I want. But these are yeah. hard times. And, and uh, I think the majority of people are getting it, but there's still yeah. some idiots out there. And, and uh, we know somebody who died alone <coughs> at a long-term care facility. Um, just that's so days ago like, because they could not have their loved one with them. Yeah. Like, like that, that, I'm sorry, you can suck it up and stay in your home for a few days when you have individuals in our community due, due to circumstances that are dying alone. Yeah. That, it's just unfortunate. Yeah. My, my great grandma back home, uh, she's 98 and uh, she keeps asking, you know, how come nobody's visiting me? Yeah. She just doesn't understand. Yeah. No. And she's alone in her little retirement home. And she, she called, like she talks to my grandma and my aunt and stuff, but she just doesn't get it. And her heart's broken and she doesn't understand. And you know, I'm, if I don't ever get to hug her, if my grandma doesn't get to hug her again, cause we don't know what tomorrow brings yeah. when you're that age. Yeah. Like I just, yeah. Well, I don't know. My grandson hasn't been able to hug his mom for two weeks. She's still got another five, five days. days to go. Like that's pretty tough for a four-year-old not to be able to hug his mom and kiss her between glass. That, and that's not that's just one situation. I know so many families because yeah. they're they're working as healthcare professionals and they're not able to you know be with their parents, be with their kids. Uh, there's a lot, and I always I keep going back to what our our uh, you know our par our grandparents, our parents went through. They went through way worse than what we're being expected. Yes. Yeah. No. They didn't have my, uh, Zoom grandchildren. They didn't, yeah, they had nothing. They had letters. They went. This some of them didn't see their loved ones for years when the Second World War, First World War, whatever you know, war you're talking about. So I think we can do this. We can do it as a city, as a province, and as a nation. We can do it. We're tougher than uh, we yeah. think sometimes, though. Well. But I'm thankful we have organizations and individuals like Ryan that we can just drop off the box to. Because yeah. <laughs> I don't want to figure this out. <laughs> no, it, and, you know, like Ryan, he's learning as he goes to it. Like, yeah, like, power to you, Ryan. You go. Well, we do our best. He showed, he showed me once the uh, Income Tax Act, and I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, and it's being rewritten as we and talk. Well yeah. They keep adding to it. They never take anything away. <laughs> you know, back in 1917, the act was 10 pages long. Yeah. Like now I it's probably 3,000 pages long. Oh, I used to think it was easy to do my income tax. Well, no <laughs> way. <laughs> it's because it's not only income tax. There's a whole bunch of social programs administered through the tax system, tax credits, economic development programs. Yeah, there's a lot involved. Um, and a normal person is not going to know how to handle all these tax credits, right? They're not going to know what's taxable, where do I apply it, when I get it, is it actually $2,000? Are they taking tax off before or after? What are they implementing, yeah. right? I, mean, it's, it's, I so doubt they're going to take tax off. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna miss out probably on something if they try yeah. to tackle this on their own. And so thank yeah. God there are for that. Well, that's a good point because that, that could, you know, as a taxable uh, amount with no tax taken off, you know, next year there'll be It'll uh, a tax impact for sure. Yeah. Because uh, I, I didn't see it required withholding on this payment. No. And you think of how many individuals that are pensioners, right? They're the blue collar. So they, they actually, every day, they take their pen and their paper, right? And they write down their budget and how much money's coming in and what we have to spend and how much can I use towards food? What goes to rent? Yeah. That's going to be a challenge when they're trying to figure, okay, now what are my tax breaks coming in? What are my credits? Am I increasing for how long? Is it four months? Is it six months? Like that's going to be a challenge. They're going to need organizations, you know, like Hompwell and many others to say, hey, help, because I don't understand this. Yeah. We're here to help. It's just increasingly challenging when you, know, you can't have in-person meetings anymore. It's all done virtually and yeah. clients largely upload their stuff now. Mm -hmm. Instead of the box, the proverbial box, it's done by a portal. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, everything's changing and, and technology is a wonderful thing, but it can also be a pretty awful thing too. So anyway, I guess it depends which side of it you're looking at it. But thank yeah. you for being able to stay in touch like this. And thank you so much, Ryan. I, I'm sure we're going to have a thousand other questions as we go through all of this. Well, again, I'm current as to yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> or this morning. It's all that way. But, uh, you know, when the new material comes out, I will, uh, I'm, you know, I'm pleased to answer any questions and share, yeah. uh, you know, how does it, how does a 75% wage subsidy work? Yeah. How does that, how does those new, you know, loan programs and, and forgiveness programs work? Uh, what did Ford, uh, Premier Ford say 40 minutes ago? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll be checking. <laughs> I'll be checking. It'll be really seriously. Yeah. Most likely it's going to be expensive. Uh, that's all I know. Yeah, and somewhere awesome. along the line, as taxpayers, we're going to be paying the shot, right? Somewhere, not I mean, it's, just us or future part. generations. I mean, we were we were already deeply indebted in Ontario, and this is just the, uh, you know, this is kind of the last thing we need. But. Yeah, and I mean, you're talking about all these benefits, and that was what kept going through my mind as I just see dollar yeah. signs, and I just keep thinking, like, who, who's going to pay for all this? Like, how is this going to lay out, free. you know, in the future? And that's scary for for everybody, but yeah, yeah. You know, at one point, do you raise taxes? Do you, I don't know. No. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much, Ryan. Thanks, and we, Ryan. We could go on for hours and yeah. hours on this stuff because, like, it, it impacts all of us individually and uh, as business owners and, and all of that. And I'll have your name and number on there. <laughs> all I can say is uh, stay, Thanks, healthy. <laughs> stay healthy. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much.